Hey guys, what's going on? It's Ash here coming at you today in Raid Shadow Legends. Welcome to the free to play account Vexal. We are back. We've been putting a lot of time into the free to play over the last few weeks. I'm a man of my word. And after hemming and hawing endlessly, I'm going to tell you the five champions it came down to. Then I narrowed it down to two champions. It's hard to farm up enough food, man. You're limited by, of course, just time. It takes a lot of time to farm up enough food to fully max out six star a champion, but also energy. You know, like I am running on empty all the time on energy takes me a while. That's why I've been focusing way more on quests uh, on this account, advanced quests and daily quests. To me, basically, I'm trying to bang out those dailies every day, get those energy rewards and kind of parlay them into more food farming. Anyway, I was uh, lucky enough to pick up a couple chickens through various, you know, tournaments or whatever. And then I farmed up a few foods. And I have my six star. Now, I left you guys, last time I left you guys, I thought I was, I was leaning more towards Bellower being my six star, my next six star on the. Yeah, yeah. That's what it's all about, right? Get out. Because he was rare and he could help me out in campaign. I'm still running Kale or Kael as Plarium calls him, as nobody else does. Uh, I'm still running Kale as my campaign farmer. He is so slow. He gets the job done. But he's slow, man. Uh, but at the end of the day, I thought to myself, you know what? It's not really about time is the issue. I'm limited by energy anyway in campaign farming. It's not like it was such an arduous of a process that I was wasting a ton of time. I really wasn't. You know, it's kind of just campaign farming in the background or whatever. Uh, using my 45 auto battles on campaign farming some days when I was, you know, you ever do this? Ever like the, for me, it's seven o'clock is reset time, Eastern time in the United States, right? But when it's about to be reset, your auto battles or Doom Tower, or whatever, you ever kind of scramble last minute and try to use them on anything? That's when I, use my auto battles on campaign sometimes i just miss them i don't know if you guys do too or if you guys are, are very uh studious about your raid shadow legends obligations so for that reason i thought you know i could still build bellower put him in a stun set and i'd still be looking good i already threw a few books into him because i am going to max out bellower eventually and i'm going to be using him even at level 50 right we had a whole video talking about the realization that i had that hey dude you can use champions at level 50, bro. You don't have to max them all out, bro. I'm so used to doing it on my main account because I'm such a dirty pay-to-win player that, I, you know, the thought of just getting a lot of value out of a four-star or five-star champion never really occurred to me. Is that embarrassing to say? Probably, but whatever. Let my mistakes, let, maybe some of you, two or three of you can learn from my mistakes. Even in a stun set with AoEs on every ability, I knew that he could help me out a lot, but I opted. He came down to Bellower and the champion that I went with. The other three options were were Herndig, who's amazing. I have three legendaries on this account that I don't have on my main account. I have Herndig, Samar Gemcursed, and Astralon. So, you know, not so much Samar, with, with all due respect, uh, but Astralon and Herndig were in the conversation, but really, it was Tormund and Raglan were the ones that I was really thinking hard about. Do I opt for them over who I eventually ended up going with? And obviously, I didn't go legendary. Raglan is so good, man. She is so good. She just came in clutch. I just finished Fire Night 20 for the first time on this account. Golf clap, please. Golf clap, please. We knew you could do it. And uh, Raglan was so clutch with those three time hitter on her A1, the turn meter fill and the revival. She probably revived like 20 times, even though I don't have a book in it. But it really came down to resources and books, right? I don't have any legendary books. As a matter of fact, I've only booked out one legendary in its ninja. Is that supposed to be a joke? This is good because I could barely read, so... No, I didn't even book out Ninja! I have not fully booked any Legendary in the game. I got lucky on Mashalt. I have one book that went into his A2. Did I do anything? That's it. How lucky is that? It's even luckier than uh, Skull Crusher. I feel like, landing on the A2, right? So I put one book into this dude and it landed on the A2, which is the most important ability. So I got so lucky there. I haven't even booked out Ninja at all here. That sucks. I have a few books on Kaimar, quite a few on Kaimar, uh, but that's it. So like, am I investing in more legendaries just so I can't book them? And I don't have any potions or many potions saved up. So it's going to take me a lot more to ascend these champions to. I ended up not going with Raglan or Tormund the Colt. I ended up going with straight up the champion that I thought could land me the most progression immediately out the gate, partially because I was actually sitting on about 10 or so epic books enough. Whatever it was, it was enough. It was probably more than 10. I had seven on this uh, one here. Okay. And a few over here. So basically I had exactly enough epic books saved 
to fully book out Sepulcher Sentinel. So knowing that going in, I didn't need her aura because I do have uh, Raglan's aura and I do have Atrak the Wender, uh, the Wanderin, the Wenderin, the, the Wender, ain't. I have his aura as well. They're both 25 in all battles. I'm going to be using Sepulcher Sentinel way more than I am uh, Atrak the Wenderin though, who I, I really like by the way. Uh, but uh, decrease attack on the A1, right? Really, really solid to have. That's at a 60% land rate, really high land percentage on that A1. It's going to help me out tremendously everywhere in the game, especially clan boss, which I'm very weak in right now. And then increase defense, block debuffs for two turns. I love the block debuffs for two turns and increase defense. I didn't have an increased defense champion. So that will have a profound effect on my uh, my progression in the game. And also, when we put them together, Achak and Wendron, both two really, really strong, robust support champions that are force affinity, I will have increased defense, block debuffs, and then I have strengthen the big version in block debuffs for one turn. Strengthen, we talked about a few videos ago. There's only eight or nine champions in the game. I actually forgot one. Uh, Sigmund, my bad. Nine champions in the game on an AoE uh, big version of Strengthen. And Atchak the Wenderin is one of only three epics to have that. That's really incredible. So when I run Atchak and Sepulture together, I'm looking really, really good, okay? And then we have this chance of blocking incoming damage. This has come through so clutch for me already in just a couple days of playing around with her. So I don't regret the decision. Let me know what you feel about it, guys. Uh, but, you know, welcome to the team, Sepulcher Sentinel. She is a beast. I'm really, really happy that I made this decision. I have not booked her yet, but I think with a day or two, I think over the weekend here, uh, by the end of the weekend, I will have her fully booked. I have enough champions that are already masteried up that I can just run some auto battles and all of the uh, the books will go towards her. Uh, or I should say, why do I keep saying books? All of the tomes or whatever these things are called. What are they called? Scrolls, dude. I'm so pay to win that I don't even I don't even scroll farm on the main account. I'm like, yep, 800 gems. Anyway, so let me show you the impact that she's made on my account, guys. Uh, first of all, Clan Boss still a work in progress, but I will run that team for you guys at the end of the video. Uh, but Dragon's Lair, she went in. I was at Dragon's 19, Dragon Lair 19, previous to building her. Now I'm all the way clearing stage 23, and I'm on stage 24. I could not beat it, but maybe with the right gear and the right champions, I will be able to pull that off. Of course, she is weak affinity, but this is my best team, guys. Boy, does it look pretty pay to win, huh? On my free to play account, right? We got uh, Kaimar. Ninja Mashald. I'm not sure if I mentioned, but Ninja Mashald, my MVPs on this account, man. I run them pretty much everywhere, even into negative affinities at times. Uh, so this team couldn't get the job done, but I will make some tweaks. Maybe we can get the job done uh, later on. But again, this was the team that got through Dragon 23. Very, very effective uh, team, and it will be even better when we do have her uh, mastery so we can get some more master damage. I didn't even show you how I built Sepulcher Sentinel. It's not that exciting, so I'll be very brief with it, but I put her in speed, speed, accuracy, and I, I really tried to prioritize speed. Get those buffs and block debuffs up as, mu as much as possible, right? I like to make my support champions nice and fast. Uh, a little light on the HP. I'd really love her to be around 35k, over 40k HP. But her defense is really nice and healthy at 3300. And then accuracy is a little low at 124. It's tough. I didn't have any accuracy banners. You will notice that I had a lot of resist on her, 215. I ended up finding a resist banner legendary with a speed roll and a couple defense, so I've decided to go with it. I had no accuracy. I have nothing. No accuracy uh, for Knight's Revenant, which is unfortunate because I ran about 300 auto battles with Spider over the last two weeks, really focused on getting my accessories built up, and that is the case for most of these champions. You'll see massive upgrades. Is that supposed to be a joke? Well, not so much there on Michelle. All right. Uh, but Prince Kaimar, I have a double attack, some speed on there. Actually, these aren't that crazy, are they? Ninja, I put in an accuracy banner, which is great. I have Achak in an accuracy banner. Now, I had a real shortage of accuracy banners. Same thing with Duck the Pierced. I have him also in uh, accuracy. So a lot of progress made. Same thing with the Cold Heart. So able to get my debuffers into accuracy, which has been incredibly helpful. Stop with the pop. Ups. I can't buy anything, man. It's free to play. Put that candy back. I'm not buying you all that mess. Oh, try me, bitch. Fire Knight, same thing. I just cleared for the first time ever fly, fly, Flyer Knight? Fire Knight 20. And uh, what I'll do is just show you this team and kind of end the video just by talking as we watch this team in Fire Knight, talking about where to go from here on this account. 
So I think in a week or two, maybe a week and a half from now, I, I ought to have my next champion built out. So what I want to do is I want to let you guys to decide. I'll throw it all, all totally in your hands. So I'll narrow it down between five champions. We'll say Bellower, Astralon, Herndig, Raglan, Tormin. And you guys can vote on a community tab poll. And that no matter who wins, that champion is the one that I will go with. We also have this simple champion or whatever his name is uh, that I will probably have unlocked soon. So I guess he's in the conversation, but let's be real. He's not in the conversation. So the game plan is probably going legendary next. So, well, that's what I want to do. You guys can decide. So I'm thinking, who would you go with? I'm thinking Raglan. Raglan. Six-star Raglan, you can't go wrong, right? But who knows? I don't wanna, I don't wanna, you know, Bellower could help me out a lot in campaign farming. Anyway, this is slow. Man, I'm not used to these teams running so slow without Seer, right? With my, uh, my Seer crutch. Uh, but I don't care about time because I'm really limited by energy on this account. That's, that's the one thing I learned about this free-to-play account is really fun, really enjoy it, really enjoy the series. I hope you guys do as well. Uh, but time doesn't matter at all. You know, optimizing your runs, at least to me, doesn't really matter. I just want to be able to beat these uh, dungeons and these these bosses. In Doom Tower, I'm actually, you know, smooth sailing as well. I, uh, you know, I haven't played yet today on Doom Tower, but I imagine I should easily get to, I think it's floor 30 today on normal with this account. So I'll have Archmage Helmet pretty soon-ish, eh, in a month or two, maybe. <laughs> He'll be in the running. I'm definitely going to uh, max out Archmage Helmet. I think that he is a uh, a must build for every player in the game, especially free to play as well. Uh, so he'll be in the conversation. I'll have still the Drake's daily login reward soon as well. You know I'm going to max out my girl. So there's a lot of champions coming to us that I'm going to be investing in as well. So take that into consideration. Those champions that I will be getting eventually uh, on this account. Uh, but I think I want my focus to be... I want to get to level 25 in every dungeon, or at least level 24, because level 24 is the best place to farm. And what I want to do is I want to strategically save my energy on this account for uh, super raids, because boy, have super raids been incredible for upgrading my artifacts. I haven't shown you my artifact collection and my accessory collection, but I think the last time I came to you guys... I probably had like 20 banners on my entire account. That's how bad I was in terms of my spider progression. So that has improved dramatically. Now I probably have 200 banners on my account. You know, I focused almost all my energy that wasn't spent on campaign in a little bit of magic keep or a little bit of uh, potion keeps, excuse me. I spent all that energy uh, primarily on uh, spider, right? To get my accessories upgraded. So I need my, the rest of my gear upgraded. And I think I need to start working a little bit more on faction crypt. So I think that after I max out whatever champion that you guys want me to max out, I think I should start focusing on... Uh, getting a few champions to level 50 to work on faction wars. Not because I ever think I'm going to unlock Lydia on this account. I'm sure people have done it free to play, but I, I'm not holding my breath on that. I want to work on the arena. My great hall is not doing that great. It's doing a little bit better, but it's no great hall. It's an average hall right now. Everybody be cool. You be cool. And then I want, and by the way, we're finally at the fire night here, but let's see how this team does. Let's see how this team does. Uh, but I need perception gear, man. I need to get better at faction wars, get those bloodstones so I can have better perception gear. Because for me, perception gear is the shortcut in this game that, you know, everybody can utilize, especially free to play, to really get high end gear on these champions. Hydra Clan boss, I don't even know if I'm going to be worried about Hydra Clan boss. But you can see Heartseeker. I think Coltar is at 160 or 170 accuracy, so I always kind of hold my breath when the uh, Heartseeker ability goes off against the Fire Knight, but I haven't, I've only tried like two or three runs, and I won every time so far, and I haven't tried Fire Knight 21, so I'm thinking I could get there. So, it's pretty cool, man, just getting Ninja, Mashalt, and Coltart, and Separate Girl Sentinel, right? Those four champions have really brought me from like level... 12, 13, 14, maybe 15 dungeon the most in every one of the main dungeons. And it brought me all the way to level 20 in every dungeon, except for Ice Golem. Ice Golem is still stuck. I can't clear. I've cleared 19. Can't clear 20. How embarrassing is that? 
<laughs> considering I have all these legendaries, but they're not booked. You guys, you guys get the point. The struggle is real, but the fun is real too. I would highly, highly encourage you guys to start a free to play account. And if you want to, it's still considered free to play. If you utilize codes or promo codes or download links, I have a download link for you guys. You'll get a free Shinaru. Uh, I think one or two ancient shards. You get a few hundred thousand silver. You get, uh, I already told you, the free epic champion, Shinoru, who's all right. I would take her to 50, but I would not uh, it, to six star her. Uh, I think you get some other stuff too. Oh, some XP boost, a bunch of XP boost. So definitely use that link if you want to start a free to play account. Uh, I don't get like paid off of that link or anything like that, but just sharing it with you guys. I'll put it in the description in the pinned comment. And uh, yeah, guys, you can see, I mean, I'm pretty proud of this team. I'm pretty proud of the team. Ninja putting out some serious damage. Really no champion has made the impact that Ninja has made on this account, even with all due respect to Michald. Uh, but guys, definitely check out the download link. Definitely vote on who you want me to see, you know, invest in next. And let me know, you know, what your strategy would be if you're in my shoes. Do you think I'm moving in the right direction here? I look forward to your feedback. Thank you so much for watching all the way till the end. Uh, I guess that's going to wrap up the video, guys. Thank you. And a big shout out to uh, G Fuel as well. Uh, G Fuel, we have a 30% boost coming up uh, tomorrow. So use my link, use my code and get 30% off your entire order. They've been a great channel partner here. So shout out to G Fuel. Thank you for watching. And as always, take care, guys.